and uh, this is going to be a reduction. So it's going to take N2 and convert it to ammonium. And then this can be used in the amino groups of the amino acids and so forth to be incorporated into proteins and also the DNA and the RNA, obviously not the amino group in amino acids though. These nitrogen fixing organisms, here's an example of one, there are many. Rhizobium is an example of one, we learned about that for our last exam that we had. This organism infects the root nodules of legumes. These are things like clover, peas, alfalfa, and it um, has a symbiotic relationship with those, with those plants. But there are also um, nitrogen-fixing bacteria that are free-living that aren't associated with the root nodules of plants. But what is interesting, if you're like into agriculture, like growing crops and things, Having growing legumes on that cropland at various points in time can add to the nitrogen, the available nitrogen for other plants in the future um, because of this symbiotic relationship. Okay, so this is going to take the N2 that's in the air and convert it into a form that then can be incorporated into proteins and nucleic acids. This is another way of making nitrogen available, but not taking N2 and doing something with it. This is the part where microbes are breaking down organic compounds, like the dead plant and animal matter. So they're breaking down the proteins and the DNA and RNA into inorganic compounds. So these would be heterotrophs that are using those organic compounds for energy and or also source of nitrogen for them. So like when we eat um, you know, a hamburger or what have you, the protein that's in there has nitrogen in it. And we're using that for energy, but we're also using it as a source of nitrogen for our own needs, for our own amino acids and our own nitrogenous bases. What's interesting also is that when, um, when the microorganisms are decomposing dead organic matter, or you know, plants and animals, this winds up being um, a product of that, the, the ammonium. And there are some microbes, so this of course is inorganic, but microbes can take that and, um, or take the organic, some organic compound. So urea winds up being a common thing that is from the breakdown of proteins. So there's some microbes that can take the urea and break it down to ammonium and you all saw that when we did the um, urease test. Uh, the microbes have the enzyme urease are able to break down, because urea is an organic form of nitrogen and able to break it down to this inorganic form of nitrogen. And this is called mineralization. So it's making things go, go from organic to inorganic. That's why it's called mineralization. But it is making this available, this nitrogen available for other organisms to do something with that. And then the, the third way that nitrogen can be made available is through assimilatory nitrate reduction. So nitrate is through the nitrate. The nitrate's getting reduced, so it's going to go that direction. Assimilatory means to become part of. So this nitrogen is going to become part of these microorganisms that are doing this. So it's going to become part of their protein, part of their RNA and DNA. And there are um, these nitrate reductases that do this. So you can see the, um, the nitrate gets reduced to nitrite, and the nitrate then could eventually get reduced all the way to here. And then this could be used by other organisms as, you know, even from the ones that are doing this, and also potentially by other organisms as a form of nitrogen that they can use for their own purposes. So those all were looking at making nitrogen available to be able to um, be 
incorporate the nitrogen into the cellular components, namely the proteins and the nucleic acids. Some microbes are going to use nitrogen compounds for an energy source. Two ways that that can happen are the mineralization and this thing called nitrification. So let's go back to the mineralization. Okay, these are our heterotrophs that are breaking down the proteins and other organic compounds into inorganic compounds. And eventually the result this and they're breaking those down because they're using not only are they going to be using the nitrogen for their own purposes as far as their own amino acids and their own DNA and RNA but then they're also getting energy out of that as well the mineralization does a couple things so this mineralization obviously it's going to be heterotrophs doing that but this other um, type of using nitrogen compounds for energy is our nitrification. And this would be our chemolithotrophs. So they're going to use inorganic nitrogen as an energy source. And so those, the electrons from the inorganic nitrogen wind up at their electron transport chain. So they're not going to have glycolysis in the Krebs cycle. They're just going to have this inorganic nitrogen that has electrons to give up, that will give up the electrons to an electron transport chain those electrons go down that electron transport chain and then it gets um, the electrons have a final electron acceptor, which could be oxygen or it could be something else. So let's take a look at that. So you can see here we are taking electrons off of this. So when we take electrons off of this, this gets oxidized. Nitrite. And then this gets oxidized further to nitrate. Um, two different organisms are going to be doing this. So that first one, the nitrosomonas, is using this for an energy source. So this is what is being um, given to the electron transport chain for a source of electrons to make the ATP, the, the chemical elastomosis that we learned about. Whereas the nitrobacter, is doing the other, the last step here, using this for electrons and getting reduced, um, or, or getting this gets oxidized to this. These, these electrons wind up on their electron transport chain, and this gets oxidized to nitrate. And here's an example. So here we have our NO2, so it's our nitrite giving up its electrons for this electron transport chain. And of course, that's going to pump the protons to one side of the membrane. We've, we've seen this before. This, this diagram came directly from our metabolism lecture that we had earlier. And then those protons eventually will go through that ATP um, rotor or the ATP synthetase to make ATP. But um, when the nitrite drops off its electron, it gets oxidized to NO3. So this nitrate winds up being a waste product for this microorganism. The electrons go down the electron transport chain and then oxygen is its final electron acceptor. So this is a chemolithotroph using this inorganic uh, nitrite for an energy source, but it needs oxygen for its electron transport chain as a final electron acceptor, so it's like an arrow. So what we're looking at here is what it, this organism does, the nitrobacter. If we were looking at the nitrosomonas, it would be this compound would be here giving its electron up, and the waste product would be nitrite. And so what's interesting about all of that is the waste product for the nitrosomonas, which is nitrite, winds up being the energy source for this other organism, nitrobacter. So you can see that these soil organisms are relying on one another because the waste product of one is useful to another. And a lot of these steps that I'm showing you here, such as these, are only carried out by microorganisms. And so if we didn't have these microorganisms, then the nitrogen cycle wouldn't be able to continue and life wouldn't be able to continue as it does today. 
So the purpose of this is to use inorganic nitrogen as your energy. 